This is the Kentucky Fathers Podcast. Um, I'm going to be real brief here. Got a lot of things on my on my mind and my heart, and I'm going to be bringing more and more of it out later. First of all, I want to say, please go to my Facebook page, Kentucky Fathers. As many of you know, um, please follow that page, like that page, and tell other fathers about about that page. As many of you know, I'm an alienated father. I was very close to my daughter. Um, I, I absolutely love being a father. Um, I was very much involved in my daughter's uh, life, education, social life, you, you know, you name it. And uh, and then at one point, and I'm still not sure why, my, my ex-wife, she just flipped the lid and she started alienating um, me from my, my, my daughter from me. To this day, we don't know what's been said to my daughter, but we know it has to be something rather devastating. And unfortunately, my daughter didn't have the maturity at that time or now to simply come up to me and say, Daddy, this is what Mama said. Is it true? Now, let me tell you something, fathers. When you go, when you go through a divorce or a separation, let's say you just, you know, you had the child out of wedlock with this woman. So you, you have a breakup. Man, parental alienation can enter that picture at any given moment. You can answer it immediately or down the road, but it can't happen. And you need to be ready for it. So uh, you need to read up on it. And I'm telling you, you need to read up on it so that you know how to handle it. You can also go to YouTube and put in parental alienation and, uh, and learn in watching videos what actually constitutes parental alienation and how you need to respond to it. There is a guy on YouTube, his name is Ryan Thomas. He's put out some books and he does some uh, webinars. He's really pretty good, so I would definitely check him out. So here's the other thing I want to say to, to fathers. Look, guys, your child, son or daughter, they need you, period. They need you. Uh, family court system here in Louisville is messed up. It's crazy. It's filled with a bunch of nut job, uh, CPS, and social workers, usually white females who are liberal, extremely liberal, radical, and they just hate men. <laughs> I know that sounds sort of exaggerated, but they just hate men. I mean, if you're a homosexual man, if you're a flamboyant homosexual, then they'll bend over backwards to help you um, fight parental alienation. But if you're just a regular guy, just a regular Joe, particularly if you're a minority, then you can forget it. They'll fight you tooth and nail. Um, so you got to arm yourself. You got to prepare, prepare yourself. You got to arm yourself. You got to know what you're, you're fighting, uh, what you're going up against. Here's some, here's some things that I've learned. Number one, don't go into family court without an attorney. You're thinking, hey, I just want to, you know, I just want joint custody. I want to see my daughter or son as often as possible and be involved in their lives. I'm more than willing to co-parent with, with the other parent. It, that's only common sense. That's good for my my, my child. Um, I have nothing against this woman I broke up with or divorced. Uh, you know, I wish her all the best. So you're thinking, hey, you know, what's the big deal? Let me tell you something. You need an attorney. Because what I just described, it was me. And I was astounded at all the things my ex-wife did to come between me and my daughter. It was, I was absolutely astounded at it. And I was really disgusted at the way people like Judge Denise Brown and attorney Michael Troutman just contributed with that. I mean, they were just, they were just with it a hundred percent. And I was astounded and that folks, I had no money. I couldn't afford it. You know, um, I, I can't afford to pay, pay attention. But I just kept thinking very naively and stupidly, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not doing, any, doing anything wrong. That, that, that stuff doesn't matter. They don't care. They do not care. And that system and those people within that system, particularly the black female attorneys, they don't care. Now, you give them money, oh, their, their tone, their ideology would change overnight. They're mercenaries. And I'm not saying that's good. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying they're mercenaries. But I'm saying, guys, Get an attorney. Second thing I want to say, never badmouth the, the other parent. 
I don't care what they say or do. You know, my ex-wife, she's, I mean, what she's doing is just ridiculous. Doesn't make any sense. But you know what? I don't badmouth her. I don't badmouth her. I really don't. And I never want to badmouth her in front of my, my daughter. Because here's one thing I've learned. Hurt people hurt. My ex-wife is, is going through, you know, a lot of issues. She's going through some struggles. She's hurt. And that's how she's sort of manifesting or dealing with her, her hurt feelings and all. And I get that. I get that. No one's perfect. Sometimes we, we deal with hurt feelings, uh, you know, in different ways. Sometimes we do it in a healthy way. Sometimes we don't do it in a healthy way. Sometimes there's a mixture of the two. So I feel for her. Only thing I'm saying to my ex-wife is, hey, our daughter needs both of us, period. And here's the third thing. A lot of times when the, the your ex gets involved with another guy or remarries, suddenly that, that other guy, he's thinking he's, he's the daddy now. He's replaced you. That was actually said in family court. They said that um, my ex-wife remarried a white dude. And Michael Trotman said in court, my ex-wife's attorney said in court that the white father has replaced the black father. I was stunned. I didn't get angry because I was shocked that somebody say something that damn racist in court. It's, it's recorded, folks. And I just, I couldn't believe it. And they flat out said that. And so... You know, they told me flat out what the strategy was. Dude, you know, you poor black guy, you're out. We're bringing in this white guy who's, who makes more money than you. And he's better than you because he's white. Interesting enough, after all that court stuff and we just stopped battling, I actually started having conversations with the guy. I, was, I ended up sending him letters. Every time I'd go up there to try to connect with my daughter, my ex-wife would refuse to talk to me, but he would come out of the house and talk to me. Um, there was a couple of times when we talked for up to 40, 45 minutes, easy, easy. We talked and I would ask him some things I say, hey man, you know, can you give me my daughter's phone number? Can you tell me where she's working? And even though right now he's dead, there's still some confidence. He still told me some things in confidence that I'm not going to share with other people even though he's dead. Maybe a few years down the road I will, but he his attitude is like, man, I, you know, I don't have a problem with you having a relationship with your daughter, but there's something going on between, you know, your daughter and the mother, and the mother just does not want uh, the daughter, your daughter, to have a relationship with you. So she's putting the screws on your daughter like forcing my daughter to choose. You choose between your mother's love or your father's love. If you choose having a relationship, a loving relationship with your father, then you won't, you know, you, you can't be with me. I won't love you. And it's a very sick thing. But hey, again, that that comes out of hurt. That comes out of a place where a person is, is feeling really hurt. Um, and it's it's sad, but it's a reality. So only thing. So you know, I just say all that to say to the to the uh, the new guy in town. Hey, don't don't stand between a man and his his children or his child. Don't do that. That's not your place. That's not your place at all. Your place is to help heal. And I understand you want to. You don't want to do something that's going to get that wife ticked off at you. But at the same time, you know what. Just comes a time you can do the right thing without that other person knowing. And my ex-wife's now deceased husband, he did do some things. He did he did do some things. He did share some information with me. And I want to thank him. I want to thank his his family. I want to pass on to you guys. You're not you're not replacing the father. No one can replace me um, as my daughter's father. No one. No man on earth ever. Not 10 years from now, 100 years from now, or 10,000 years from now. And it's the same thing with the mother. It's the same thing with the mother. So I just wanted to share that, guys. And uh, and um, I think at one point I'm, I'm looking to try to do like a, a mini conference for alienated fathers where we can come together and talk. 
talk about our experiences, but not just talk about our experiences, but also talk about some possible solutions and ways we can we can support sort of support one another and encourage one another.